Now, let's talk about that report today from the Fabian Society. Labour has almost no chance of winning the next election. That's according to that think tank, which is closely linked to the party. The Fabian Society says Labour should consider working with rivals like the Scottish Nationalists or the Liberal Democrats if it ever wants to get into power. It comes after the union leader Len McCluskey appeared to indicate that Jeremy Corbyn could step down before the next general election if the party's poll ratings remained awful, as he put it. Well, let's discuss generally the state of the Labour Party and the future of the party. With me here in the studio is John McTernan, a former special advisor to Tony Blair. He's now head of international political practice at Pension Berland, which is a consulting firm. Also in our studios at Westminster is George Eaton, political editor of The New Statesman. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, Happy New Year to both of you and welcome. Uh, John McTernan, I mean, do you broadly agree with what with what the Fabian Society is saying here? Oh, yeah, there's nothing surprising in this report. There's two big factors. Uh, one is the boundary review, which is going to take seats away from Labour areas. And the other is that Jeremy Corbyn has taken the Labour Party from support in the low 30s to support in the mid-20s. Uh, and if that decline continues, you see Labour polling, as the Fabians suggested, around 20%. But even on 25%, Labour would be heading for one of its worst uh, electoral defeats ever. And there is no sign that Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell can reach the centre the ground voters, the middle of the road voters, the middle class mainstream who determine UK elections. In the end, that's what dooms Labour. Uh, too big uh, to die, but far too weak to win. But George Eaton, it, some of this goes back to pre-Corbyn though, doesn't it? I mean, it didn't, didn't problems begin for the party even before he was leader? Yes, they did. They had a very bad result in, in 2015, most notably, of course, in Scotland, where they lost all but um, one of their 40 MPs. They're still polling terribly there. Um, Labour for a long time has struggled to have a convincing message on, on the economy and in the wake of the financial crisis for which it, it was blamed. And the Conservatives obviously shaped the debate around the issue of, of the deficit. Um, but this does make the point, magnify the point that things really haven't, in, haven't improved since and they've actually got worse. And of course, normally at this point, you'd expect the opposition to be ahead in the polls. Labour was ahead in the polls under Ed Miliband at this point. And it's not as if the government hasn't provided plenty of opportunities for Labour to land blows on it. It is uh, profoundly defi- d- divided over a lot of um, Brexit questions. Uh, the economy is uh, not performing particularly well. Uh, living standards have still barely recovered from the crash. So you would be expecting the opposition to be making gains. That said, you look across Europe, social democratic centre-left parties are, are performing pretty poorly everywhere. And uh, that's why Labour has to has to rethink its uh, its positions and, and its purpose uh, so dramatically. I mean, I mean, that's, John McTurn, that's an interesting point, isn't it? It's, it? it's not only the Labour Party in this country. I mean, we, we can see parallels in some other countries. Uh, we can, although British politics is British politics. And if any political party, if the Labour Party today came up with an answer for social care for older people, for housing for younger people, and decent pension system for today's workers, it could sweep the board. Politics is simply politics. If you can solve the biggest problems facing people, then they will vote for you. But why isn't Corbyn and his team doing that? Because those are surely the, precisely the sort of issues that, that you, you would think that, that his team are, are exercised about. You only need to look on social media to see that the aim of Jeremy Corbyn and his followers is to purify the Labour Party, to drive out from the Labour Party MPs, members, activists, councillors who disagree with them. They want an ultra-left party. They don't care if it gets to 20% or it gets to 15%. It would be the biggest ultra-left party the country has ever had. So they're purifying the Labour Party. Their biggest enemies aren't the Tories. Their biggest enemies are Blairites. Um, And that's the problem. The, The public aren't unaware of it. The Labour Party is run by extremists who are trying to drive it further and further to the left. And look at Len McCluskey comes out making statements about what should or should not happen for the Labour Party leadership. Trade union bosses thinking it's their job not to represent their their members but to represent, you know, a voice in the Labour Party. It's ridiculous. Of course people turn their back on a party in that situation. But but if, so therefore, if, hypothetical, if another leader came in next week, would that though dramatically transform the party's 
uh, the party's situation at the moment where it is? I mean, would that mm. new leader suddenly bring back all those votes that it hemorrhaged in Scotland, for example? Well, look in, I mean, just look in Copeland. There's a by-election, a big test of Labour, where the voters uh, know that Labour's leadership are anti-nuclear, know they're anti-nuclear weapons. So there's Barrow with uh, Trident submarines, there's Sellafield with nuclear jobs. Um, say David Miliband was selected to be the candidate there. The voters would get the message. There's a centrist, a progressive, somebody who's got a big vision for the country. It doesn't take much to reposition a political party, given, as George said, this current government offer target after target after target. I mean, it is ludicrous that a prime minister can keep saying Brexit means Brexit, not define it, when it's the biggest economic issue facing this country for the next 50 years. This will set our living standards for the next 50 years. Um, and the government should be vulnerable on that, because the economy really matters. It should be vulnerable on everything. It requires political leadership and policy and politics. And that's what it comes down to. The weakness of the Labour Party is entirely imposed by itself. A bad leader in Gordon Brown, a bad leader in Ed Miliband, a disastrous leader in Jeremy Corbyn. That can be resolved with leadership. And, and George Eaton, how, where is the balance for you then about the current leadership, uh, the purification, as John McTurn calls it, versus actually just a, a, a lack of ability, apparently, to, to score any points or to come up with good, solid policy proposals that the public like? Um, I think it's... I think all of those factors are, are important. I mean, what stands out for me is, is the inability of recent Labour leaders to craft a plan for, for winning a majority. Um, and the report, for instance, suggests forming a, a progressive alliance with other parties. Uh, I mean, of course, it would, be, it would be odd in this situation not to look at how you can uh, beat the Conservatives by working together. But the reality is, if Labour's ever going to get back into government, if it's ever going to win a majority again, it has to convert millions of people who vote for the Conservatives at the moment. And that means you need a convincing economic message. It means you need a popular, appealing leader. And too often, Labour's been internally divided. It hasn't had uh, a national message uh, that resonates with, with all sections of, of the country. It hasn't, had, it hasn't been ambitious enough. Um, at the last election, it was unclear to many people what Labour stood for. It, it, I think its message was too pessimistic. I don't think it was optimistic enough. I think it can learn from uh, the victory of, of someone like uh, Sadiq Khan in London, who did have an offer to all sections of the electorate, who did have a simple, optimistic message, which um, he constantly repeated. Um, and I think it's a distraction as well to imagine that Labour can somehow speak for the 48 percent who voted for Remain or focus on the 52 percent who voted for Leave. It does have to speak for 100 percent to, to all voters because there are Remain voters who care about housing just as there are Leave voters who care about their issues. You've got to find ways of, of uniting them. Um, at the moment, um, it risks uh, adopting a zero percent strategy where you satisfy neither group. Uh, John McTurner, we're, we're almost out of time, but one closing thought from you, because you were nodding through, through most of that. I think Labour has to be optimistic. Labour has to be the party, to quote Donald Trump, of making Britain great again. John McTurner, George Eaton, thank you very much indeed. We will discuss again in uh, 2017, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Thank you.